Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Stefan and today we're going to be taking another look at the Stellaris economy. Today we're going to be covering planets, how to develop them, how to make them the most productive possible, and how to get them running as soon as possible. So let's begin. In year zero, you only have one planet to actually manage, and that is your capital. On this planet you will have your planetary administration and whatever buildings you have at the start. However, you have one optional choice, a building slot. Generally, I like to build either a research lab or an alley foundry. In fact, at this point, and all the way up to year 2250, there are only four buildings to worry about. Alley foundries, research labs, consumer goods production, and robot assembly plants. Now, robot assembly plants are something we don't have yet, but that is something we want to construct on every planet. You want to build as many of these robot assembly plants as possible, and since they're only limited one per planet, you'll want to leave a building slot open for one of them on every planet. Well, not open, you generally want to construct something on it, uh, but as soon as possible, you'll want to replace a building to get robots going. Robots are a very nice boost to pop production, uh, it's to pop growth per month, and those robots have 100% habitability. That is extremely useful when it comes to colonizing low hab worlds, and uh, we're actually going to talk about that a bit later, around year 2230. But anyways, let's get back to this one planet. If you're playing on lower difficulties, you'll want to spam research labs. If you're playing on higher difficulties, you're also going to want to spam research labs. However, you will also want to build at least one additional ally foundry. Two ally foundries is just barely enough to actually survive Grand Admiral without cheesing or anything like that. By building up stations on your borders, you save a bunch of alloys, a bunch of upkeep, and a bunch of energy. It's quite the good deal, and if you can make your fleet bait the enemy fleet into the station, well, you got no problems. Generally speaking, even on these higher difficulties and without any special civics, you will be able to keep up with the enemy fleet progression by just researching the star hole, star fortress, etc. techs. And so, going with a defensive strategy and taking your few planets resulted in this. We have two choke points over here and a choke point over here that is going to be built up as soon as possible. This is a relatively typical situation. We didn't get overly lucky with uh, other planets being habitable for us. Uh, but they have some potential and can be colonized a bit later. We do have our guaranteed two planets, and even though they are only size 16, it doesn't really matter. Even if they were both size 10, it would still be worth it to colonize and call them a home. You see, planet size doesn't actually matter up until the point where you actually, you know, hit the cap on districts. That point is well beyond getting to 10 pops, and 10 pops is what we're going to achieve with our colony development. That is because at 10 pops, you can upgrade your initial colony building to a planetary administration. Once we get to the planetary administration, our pop growth doubles. And uh, double the pop growth means double the workers. That's why we want to accelerate this process as much as possible. Now, one way to accelerate this is, as I mentioned before, by building robot assembly plants. However, there is one more way, and that is resettlement. I do not recommend overusing this method, but if you can get your colony to 5 pops and build a robot assembly plant, it is well well worth it. Make sure to build up the districts necessary to provide actual employment, and make sure you don't lose any buildings on your initial planet because otherwise your economy will suffer. While resettling will benefit your colonies, the most efficient production is on your capital. And if too many pops leave your capital, you're going to be in a really tough spot. And uh, we want to play it safe. I generally like to keep at least 25 pops on my first planet so that it doesn't actually interfere with the building slots. Now there is an exploit associated with this. If you resettle 10 pops to a planet, upgrade to planet to administration, and then resettle those pops back, you will actually get the full pop growth. However, it does take a lot of resources and it is an exploit, so I highly, highly recommend against it. Uh, but anyways, let's turn our attention to our colony. On our colony, we want to build as many districts as we need. Uh, if you need to sell some stuff to get the minerals for it, go ahead and do it. Uh, because unemployment is going to be a big pain at this stage of the game. So make sure all of your pops are employed and you will not have any problems. Additionally, your districts will provide you with housing. And so if you don't have enough districts, it's actually a double problem because your pops are both homeless and unemployed. That will take the stability and your colony will produce nothing. As far as crime and amenities go, uh, crime can be basically ignored. Crime is going to be at a very low level. Uh, your governor will have some experience and uh, you will really not need the enforcer. So once you get the planetary administration up, you'll want to unemploy the enforcer as soon as possible. That way he's doing something a bit more useful. Uh, you should have enough amenities to make it until the planetary administration and then at the point of planetary administration you will have rulers. Rulers will produce a bit more amenities than your colonists and uh, so those amenity issues should be resolved. If you're really lacking amenities, 
uh, go ahead and uh, distribute luxuries. At this point in the colony's development, these guys only cost 100 each and provide you with a nice amenities bonus. Uh, these guys are much more efficient than actually having pops uh, producing amenities. Uh, that is because to produce amenities, your pops need to be either clerks or entertainers. Entertainers waste building slots and clerics are just a waste of all. Uh, you don't want to build city districts because they're high upkeep and are very expensive. The housing bonus the city districts provide is really negligible. You don't really have any housing issues up until 20 pops or so. And uh, so these guys are a waste. Plus, clerks are really inefficient. Uh, they only produce two amenities each, and one of those amenities is consumed by them. The two trade value they produce is virtually nothing. Uh, that is the equivalent of either two energy, or an energy and half a consumer good. That is really not worth it. Technicians are much more efficient, and, uh, well, artisans, which produce consumer goods, are much more efficient as well. Plus, there is no actual tech to increase the production of clerks. Technicians, for example, have techs that increase their energy production by 20%, and there are quite a few techs like this. Clerks have nothing. They'll stay at 2 energy production while technicians get more and more efficient. Instead, you want as much manual labor on your colonies as possible. And if you're using robots to boost your production, you'll want to have some agriculture districts or mining districts. Remember, robots can only fulfill two jobs, miners and farmers. Until you research droids around year 20 to 50, uh, that's all you're actually going to have. And so you should build some districts assigned to robots specifically, just so that they actually can do something. Robots are labor, and there's no reason not to use them. Uh, that about covers the early colony. The only other thing that you can really do is uh, go ahead and designate the planet as something. This is generally a bad idea. You want to keep it at a colony because a colony gets plus 20% to pop growth and plus 10% to happiness. So really it's the best option and you should just leave it at that. This option will disappear once you reach 10 pops, but by that point, your pop growth will double anyways. But anyways, that about does it for the early colony. Let's move on to a more developed colony. Alrighty, we have skipped forward a couple decades and now we're a bit further ahead. Our two colonies have developed a bit further, they are now at 23 and 21 pops respectively, and are both looking quite good. And so as you can see here, I've continued developing these planets just in the same way they were developed before. A bunch of districts for the jobs and the housing, and of course a single city district at 20 pops. Before that there were no housing issues, uh, but that one city district was necessary. This way we have everything in the positive, and the only reason this one clerk is employed is because I'm just building up the planet to give him a job. Once he does start doing something more useful, it will drain the amenities somewhat, however being like 5 below on amenities is not that big of a deal. At 30 pops I'm planning to build a hollow theater and that's actually going to solve pretty much all the amenity issues until the end game. Now with the buildings, as you can see here, I've built just the civilian industries. Uh, this planet is general purpose in terms of districts and single purpose in terms of buildings. You only really get to specialize on one thing, at least at this point in the game, because you only get one designation to a planet. For this planet I will choose an industrial world, and that will reduce the factory build speed and reduce the mineral upkeep of my artisans. The other planet, as you can see here, is full of research labs, and in fact, that's all I have. Research labs, ally foundries, and consumer goods. My planets are quite specialized, and we only have the two ally foundries we started with. Those two ally foundries were sufficient. We have a small fleet and a couple stations. These stations do the bulk of the protecting. Combined with a small fleet, this station can easily repel the enemy. Now you might have seen this little icon on planets, and that is the art monument. The art monument gives you plus 15% amenities and can be purchased from the artisans. So discover them as soon as possible and get this thing on all your planets. This little thing makes sure you have quite enough amenities for quite some time without having to resort to clerks or entertainers and generally helps you through with your economy. Amenities are a thing where you don't really get too much benefit from having too much of it, but at the same time, you do want to keep them above zero. Uh, with too little amenities, uh, your stability and happiness will take a hit, and you really don't want that to happen. Besides the art monument, which is a decision once you purchase it, you have another good option, and that is encourage planetary growth. This is quite worthwhile, it amounts to about 8 food per month, and it increases pop growth speed by 25%. It is very well worth it, and uh, if you can get food production up and running, uh, these guys will help your pop growth significantly. So keeping a surplus of food is a good idea to make sure you can enable this decision and uh, make sure your pops grow a bit faster. Now let's take a look at the result of this strategy. With this pop growth focus and uh, just two planets to colonize, we actually got quite a few pops. 
We have 76 pops. This empire has 48. This guy has 70. This guy has 56. And the only guy around us that can beat us in pops is this guy with nine planets and half his population being alien. And so you can see that this strategy is quite effective. Remember, the more pops you have, the more production you have. And uh, so gauging yourself against other empires in terms of pops is generally a good metric. In fact, at this point, we're doing especially well. We're about to go ahead and resettle some of our pops onto these new colonies. The pops that we're going to resettle are not going to be our normal living, breathing things. These guys are going to be our toasters, which we have built up over the years to sufficient amounts to actually get to five pops, build a robot assembly plant, and uh, get these colonies going. These colonies are going to produce resources for us, and uh, since robots are unaffected by habitability, uh, this is going to work out quite nicely. Let's take a look in the future and see how these colonies are doing. Oh, would you take a look at that? We have some production going. And a lot of the pops in these planets are robots. This reduces the impact of habitability quite a bit. And uh, with the robotic ascension going on, we're going to be quite well in the future as well. Uh, just a quick tip for the future, robotic ascension is the best ascension. I'll be demonstrating robotic ascension a bit in the future, uh, but for now, this is going to be about it. As you can see here, our planets are nice and built up, relatively specialized. Of course, specialization isn't everything. If you really need something, like consumer goods for example, don't wait for your consumer goods planet to actually open up a new building slot, instead just build consumer goods wherever. But anyways, these are the planets, and this is the general resources that you should expect by this point in the game. Of course, we will spend some of our resources to go ahead and upgrade our stations, because getting rolled over by the AI is not fun. But as you can see here, our reliance on choke points and stations saved us quite a bit of resources, and uh, the defenses that we have are quite sufficient to ward off any opponent. Stations are very powerful. Learn to respect them, and your economy will prosper. But anyways, that about does it for part 2. In the next video, I will cover how to manage planets in the late game, and most importantly, talk about strategic resources. These guys are very valuable, and uh, learning how to use them properly and knowing how to use them properly is either going to make or break your empire. But anyways, that's about it. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to stick around for part 3. Thanks, and bye bye.